Lolita Let your spirit come and settle on me Let your spirit come Let your spirit come Let your spirit come and settle on me Precious Lord let your guiding hands lead me through this land and set me free. Oh, and Lord, let your will be done. Let your spirit Hello, everyone, and welcome to Soup and Scripture, Prayers in the Garden. Uh, we are in week six of our study of Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, and that means that Easter is just around the corner. I hope you've all enjoyed learning about this prayer as much as I have. Tonight, we will be taking a look at verses 20 and 21. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. In the previous verses, uh, we, we read that, that Jesus is praying to the Father to sanctify the apostles in the truth of the word, to make them holy so that they can go out into the world um, and become the foundation of his church spreading the truth of God's word and the truth that is Jesus Christ and bringing God's children into the body of Christ. So here in verse 20, Jesus is praying for God to also sanctify all those who believe in him as a result of the teachings of the apostles. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word. Jesus is not just praying for those uh, people who hear the words of the apostles in their own time, but he's, he's also praying for the future of the church. All those who will believe in me through their word. This means that Jesus is praying for us. He's praying for you and me. And what he's praying for is pretty clear. In verse 21, uh, uh, Jesus says that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, May they also be in us. He wants his followers to be unified, but not just unified with each other. Jesus is praying that we will also be united with him and God the Father. We are to be one body, connected physically and spiritually. In Romans 12, 4 and 5, uh, Paul describes it in this way. For just as each of us has one body with many members... And these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. So Paul is saying that in Christ we are not only unified we actually belong to each other and to Jesus 
Each of us, according to our God-given talents and gifts, must play our part in the mission of the church. We ought to be in perfect harmony with God, with Jesus, and with each other. The apostles built the early church by living out Jesus' prayer. 1 John verse 1 through 1 3 says, We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. The Greek word that John uses here is koinonia, which is defined as a close relationship or communion with someone. So John uses this word to describe a very close relationship with God. It's to be in, in fellowship or communion with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, and all of the disciples of Christ. So Jesus prays that everyone, present and future, who hears the words of the apostles and believes in him, will be made holy and be united with each other and himself and with the Father. How amazing is it that the one who was with the Father when the universe and all living things were created would pray for us to be in communion with him and God the Father in his final hours before he sacrifices himself for us. Wow, that's how much God loves us. So why is this so important to Jesus? Well, in verse 21, it says, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. St. Thomas Aquinas said that nothing shows the truth of the gospel better than the charity of those who believe. So how can we do our part to show the world that Jesus is Lord and Savior and that he is alive in us, his body? And what does that unity look like in our time? When we look around, we see so much division in the world. Um, there's not only political and social and cultural division, but uh, the church is also divided on so many different issues. And the fact that as Christians, we really have been able to be in fellowship with each other the way we would like since COVID-19 started, um, that doesn't really help the situation. So in these times, how can we have the unity that Jesus was praying for? In John 13, 35, Jesus says, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Right there would be a pretty good place to start, wouldn't it? We can also start by using the gifts that we have been blessed with to bring God's message and God's love out into the community to those who, who are in need. I look forward to when we can once again have church has left the building. Living out Jesus' commandments to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind and love your neighbor as yourself. When we worship together or participate in, in our growth groups or give of our time in one of the many ministries of our church, we are living out Jesus' prayer for us. That is how we can be in fellowship or in communion with each other and with God the Father and with Jesus Christ. And that is how we are to show the world that God the Father sent Jesus and Jesus sends us. That is how our communion with each other and with Jesus is manifest in our time, in our world, and in our lives. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for loving us so much that you sacrificed your only son. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings in our lives and for the opportunities every day to show the world that we are yours by the love we give to others. Help us, God, to seize every opportunity we can to use our gifts to bring your love and your light to those who need it most and help us to seek out the unity that Jesus prayed for. We pray this in his name. Amen.
Good night, everyone.